The Louisville Mansion. My encounter in an old mansion in Louisville, Kentucky, is something that I still can't fully explain. I had moved to Louisville for work and heard stories about the city's historic district being home to some of the most haunted places in the state. The mansion in question, a Victorian era building, was known for its eerie past and supposed paranormal activity. I got the chance to visit the mansion during the local heritage event. The house was impressive, with its gothic architecture and antique furnishings. During the tour, our guide shared stories of the original owners and various reports of ghost sightings, including the apparition of a woman in a Victorian dress seen wandering the halls. As the tour proceeded, I lagged behind taking in the details of the house. When we reached the upper floors, I felt a sudden drop in temperature. It was a warm day and the house didn't have air conditioning, so this sudden chill was unexpected. In one of the bedrooms, I stopped to look at an old portrait. That's when I heard a soft whisper, almost like a sigh, right next to my ear. I turned around quickly, but no one was there. The rest of the group was in the next room, and I was alone. Feeling unnerved, I hurried to catch up with the others. As the tour ended and we were about to leave, I decided to use the restroom on the first floor. Walking down the hall, I saw a figure out of the corner of my eye. It was a woman, dressed in a long flowing gown similar to the Victorian style our guide had mentioned. I assumed she was part of the staff or an actor hired for the event. She didn't look like a ghost. She looked fully fleshed out, just like anyone else. I called out to her, asking if I could ask her about the history of the house, but she didn't respond. She simply walked toward the end of the hall and then vanished. I rushed to see where she had disappeared, but there was no one there, and there was no exit she could have taken. It was literally a dead end, no pun intended. I left the mansion in a complete state of disbelief. I couldn't shake the feeling that what I had experienced was something far out of the ordinary. The Watcher of Red River Gorge by Armana O. My encounter in the dense shadowed woods of Red River Gorge in Kentucky was a chilling experience that still lingers in my memory. Known for its breathtaking natural beauty, Red River Gorge is also steeped in local folklore with tales of mysterious creatures and unexplained phenomena. I was on a weekend camping trip seeking solitude in nature's embrace. The gorge, with its towering cliffs and winding rivers, seemed the perfect escape. On my second night, as I sat by the campfire, the forest around me was alive with the sounds of nocturnal creatures. It was well past midnight when I first heard it, a soft rhythmic tapping, like someone knocking on wood. I assumed it was a woodpecker or some other animal, but the sound was persistent, growing louder, closer. Curiosity peaked, I grabbed my flashlight and ventured into the woods. The tapping led me deeper into the forest, away from the safety of my campsite. The dense canopy above swallowed the moonlight, casting eerie shadows across my path. As I walked, I felt a growing sense of unease the feeling of being watched from the darkness. Then I saw it, standing between two trees, partially obscured by shadows, was a figure. It was tall and humanoid, but unnaturally thin, its limbs elongated, and its head slightly cocked to one side, as if examining me. Its eyes, if it had any, 
were hidden in the darkness. Frozen in place, I felt a primal fear take hold. The figure remained motionless, just watching. The woods were silent now, the earlier chorus of nocturnal sounds eerily absent. The air grew colder, and a mist began to rise from the ground, enveloping the figure until it was barely visible. I don't know how long I stood there, locked in this silent standoff, but eventually, I mustered the courage to move. As I slowly backed away, the figure remained still, its presence looming in the mist. When I reached my campsite, the fire had died down to embers, casting a faint, dying glow over the area. My tent seemed like a fragile shield against the vast, unknowable wilderness that surrounded me. I spent the rest of the night awake, my senses heightened to every rustle and whisper of the woods. I half expected to see that figure emerge from the shadows, but the woods remained silent, as if holding its breath. The normal nocturnal sounds didn't return. There was no chirping of crickets or hooting of owls, just a suffocating stillness that enveloped the campsite. Every snap of a twig or shift of the wind sent a jolt of adrenaline through me. As dawn broke, bringing light and a semblance of normalcy back to the forest, I felt a profound sense of relief, but also of deep unsettlement, knowing that the serenity of the day masks the mysteries that come alive under the cover of night. After I had gotten back from my trip, I learned about the legend of the Watcher, a spirit said to guard the forest. It was believed to appear to those who ventured too deep into the woods, a reminder to respect the wilderness. Whatever it was I encountered at Red River Gorge, I haven't been back since, and I'm not sure if or when I ever will go back again. I just can't get that creature out of my head. Waverly Hills Sanatorium by Katie R. My paranormal encounter at Waverly Hills Sanatorium in Kentucky, a place infamous for its haunted history and unsettling past, still haunts my thoughts. Located on a hilltop in Kentucky, Waverly Hills served as a tuberculosis hospital in the early 20th century, where thousands unfortunately succumbed to the disease. The stories of hauntings and unexplained phenomena drew me there. I had a mix of curiosity and skepticism going in. As I joined a guided night tour of the sanatorium, the imposing Gothic structure loomed against the sky, its broken windows like dark, watchful eyes. The guide began recounting the sanatorium's history, the suffering of its patients, and the numerous reports of ghostly sightings. We made our way through the dilapidated halls, the air heavy with the weight of untold stories. The most unsettling part of the tour was the visit to the infamous Death Tunnel, a long downhill passageway used to discreetly remove the bodies of patients who had died. As we descended into the tunnel, a palpable sense of dread filled the air. The tunnel was cold, damp, and pitch black, save for the beams of our flashlights. We were halfway down when I heard it, the sound of faint, echoing footsteps coming from the darkness behind us. I turned, shining my light down the tunnel, but there was nothing there. Feeling unnerved, we continued, but the footsteps persisted, keeping pace with us. Then, suddenly, they stopped. In the silence that followed, a chilling whisper brushed past my ear unintelligible but unmistakably human. I spun around, but again, there was nothing but the oppressive darkness of the tunnel. As we emerged from the tunnel, the sense of unease stayed with me. The rest of the tour was marked by minor unexplained occurrences, doors creaking open on their own, sudden drops in temperature, the feeling of being watched, 
that kind of thing. The climax of the experience came when we visited one of the old patient wards. As we stood there in the dark, abandoned room, a gust of wind swept through out of nowhere, despite all the windows being sealed. Then, the beam of my flashlight caught the fleeting image of a figure, dressed in what appeared to be a hospital gown, moving across the room before disappearing into thin air. More than one of us saw this. The encounter at Waverly Hills Sanatorium was more than just a ghost tour. It was a brush with something unexplainable, a peek into what lies beyond. And honestly, I came out a believer. In what in particular, I'm not entirely sure. But there's something after this world. Paranormal Experience in the Woods of Eastern Kentucky by user one refrigerator 465 posted to r slash paranormal. I'm posting this mostly to try and find some sort of community or answers. I am in Moorhead, Kentucky, and have been experiencing unexplainable things while I've been hiking around Eagle Lake or near Cave Run. I'm not a superstitious person, and I'm very rational when it comes to the animals in our region. It will sound as if something is approaching, much closer than any animal should. And when I notice, I react or stomp my feet, it stops. This unrelenting dread and overwhelming anxiety falls over me and I can't shake it. And I know I have to leave at that point. Each time as I've started to leave, whatever it is has charged quickly, coming much closer and essentially chasing me from where I've been. I refused to return to Eagle Lake after I experienced it the first time, and I chose to go to a pretty popular area near Cave Run. The same exact thing has happened more than once. I have not been able to shake the feeling. I have definitely been the only one in the area on both occasions, and there have been no animals nearby, definitely not ones large enough to make the sounds that I've heard. My girlfriend has been with me on each occasion and has heard and felt the same thing as me. If anyone has seen, felt, or heard something similar, please let me know. The Burned Man Upstairs by user KentuckyWitch0828 posted to r slash paranormal. This story is from a while back, before I moved to my current home. In 2016, my mom and I moved into a very old home. Over the few years we lived there, we had quite a few experiences, but the most notable for me personally was the incident of where I came face to face with the burned man upstairs. It was a weeknight and I had school the next day. At around midnight, I went to bed, which was a bit early for me at the time. A few hours later, I woke up drenched in sweat. My fan was turned off. Annoyed, I rolled over to turn it back on and I looked up at my door, noticing that it was open. The door opened a little bit more and a strange looking nude man was standing before me. He seemed abnormally tall. I'd say almost six foot. His head was nearly touching the door frame and his skin appeared off, similar to somebody who's received a skin graft after being burned. It appeared visibly tacky and wasn't very pleasant to look at, but its face was even worse. The skin on its mouth seemed to have been drawn back, exposing the gums fully, and one eye seemed far too small, and the other far too large. Whatever this was, it just stood there in my doorway, looking at me. It smiled after it made eye contact with me. To this day, I can't tell you why I responded this way. 
I get grumpy when I first wake up, and this was no exception. Basically, I told this thing to F off and rolled over and fell back asleep. After turning my fan back on, of course. That morning, my door was still open, but nothing was there. I went into full panic mode, the reality of it all having finally settled into my awake mind, and I refused to sleep up there for weeks. It didn't help much that by that point, I had a lot more stories from that house. Some things to consider. This home was once a funeral home, which did have a fire a long time ago. I'm not sure if anyone was hurt or killed in this fire or not. I always sleep with my door closed, and I remember closing my door that night. It was a bit finicky, however, as there was no lock. And due to the house shifting, if you stepped on a certain floorboard, it would pop open. However, this almost always wakes me up, and I would have noticed it. At no point did I feel threatened during this encounter, despite its strange appearance. I have a respectful fear of the paranormal. Out of all the other experiences in this house, this was the one time that I did not feel scared or creeped out by a paranormal event. I never talked about it after the first time it happened, and nobody but my mom knew until now. My mom's friend and their little boy moved in. Despite nobody telling him about what I saw, he would wake up screaming in the dead of night, and whenever we would check and ask him what was wrong, he would talk about the tall man with the weird face. The Entity of Pine Mountain by Joseph R. My encounter in the dense, shadow-laden woods of Pine Mountain in Kentucky was an experience that profoundly altered my understanding of the natural and the supernatural. Pine Mountain, cloaked in legends and eerie tales, has always been a magnet for those fascinated by the unexplained. I had ventured into these woods for a solo hiking trip drawn by its rugged beauty and the solitude it promised. The first day passed without incident, filled with the tranquil sounds of nature and the scenic views of the Appalachian landscape. As night fell on the second day, I set up my camp near a small clearing. The darkness in these woods felt deeper, more consuming, as if it had a quality all its own. I sat by the campfire the flames casting dancing shadows around me. That's when I first heard it, a faint whispering, like voices carried on the wind. Initially, I thought it was just the breeze rustling through the leaves, but the whispering grew louder and more coherent. It sounded like a conversation, but in a language I couldn't understand. Intrigued and unsettled in equal measure, I ventured toward the source. The whispering seemed to be emanating from a dense thicket of trees near the edge of the clearing. As I approached, a sense of dread began to build within me. The air grew colder, and a mist began to rise from the ground, swirling around the trees. And then I saw it. A shadowy, formless entity amongst the trees, its shape shifting and undulating, as if made of smoke. It was the source of the whispers which now sounded almost chant-like, a chorus of ethereal voices that filled the night air. Rooted to the spot, I felt an overwhelming sense of, I don't know, unearthliness. The entity seemed ancient, as old as the mountains themselves, and its presence was both terrifying and mesmerizing. I couldn't decipher the words, but the whispers evoked images of times long past, of lives lived and lost within the woods. As quickly as it had appeared, the entity vanished, the whispers dissipating into the night with it. The sudden silence was almost deafening. I hurried back to my campsite, my heart pounding away in my chest. I spent a restless night, jumping at every sound, every crackle of a branch. The woods felt alive, 
aware and watchful. As dawn broke, I packed up quickly, eager to leave the oppressive atmosphere of the clearing. Later, at a nearby town, I recounted my experience to a local at a bar. I thought he would laugh it off, but he told me about an old legend, a spirit of the mountain, said to communicate with the living, offering glimpses of ancient wisdom and warnings. My encounter in the woods of Pine Mountain was a journey into the unknown, a brush with something that defied explanation. I still don't know what it was, whether it was the spirit that man told me about or whether it was something else entirely, but I feel like I touched the other side, and this side hasn't quite felt the same since.